How's it going guys? It's Kevin. I'm coming back to you guys with another video. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about how I would learn to code if I had to start all over again. Like my genie in a bottle. This can get me rich, look like a magazine model. Before you know it, he have her on the stroll. Fresh and ripe, complexion like Acapulco gold. All right, so when I first started coding, I really knew nothing, right? I was obviously starting from the very beginning. And I think if I had to go all the way back and start all over again, there's really three primary things that I would try and do. And I think the first thing of those three things is that I would try and learn a full stack language. And when I first started learning the code, I think this made a lot of logical sense, like looking back now, but I think at the same time, it didn't do me any favors. So when I first started coding, I learned Python. And I think Python was a really great choice, really easy choice, really logical choice for me to learn because it really just looks like English, right? So it's a very easy way to sort of transition into learning how to program and learning how to code. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, even though there are front end things that you can do, right, you can use Flask, which is like a web framework for Python, but that's nothing that I did, right? Everything that I did when I was first starting to learn the code was like, just locally on my own laptop. Nothing was ever deployed to a server. I never even ran like a local server on my computer. I was strictly learning like if else statements, for loops, conditionals, classes, functions in Python. And while that was really great, it really never taught me anything in terms of like how the real world works with servers and APIs and code and load balancers and all this other stuff. And I know it's definitely getting ahead of myself, right? Like that's not stuff that I was necessarily gonna learn, all those things at least in an introductory to Python class. But at the same time, I don't think just sitting there and like running a Python script on my computer to play tic-tac-toe or print out hello world was doing me any favors either. So I think I wish there was more of a balance between like learning how to actually write code, right? Or give computers instructions, but also like why is that relevant for the real world as opposed to just you know, running a snake application on my own local computer. And so just to build on top of that, I think you know, whatever language you wanna learn, that's great. I don't think, I'm not gonna say like, you have to learn JavaScript, for example, but I do think that whatever you try and do, try and learn how the front end and the back end talk to each other. Because in my head, that was mind blowing. That was never a thing that I, you know, covered in an intro, intro class like Python or just learning how to code in Python. And I think that's something that would have been really, really helpful. Like understand that there's a user experience, right? There's a UI and when you click a button, like, and Uber doesn't just show up, right? Like there's something that happens behind the scenes that tells that Uber where you are, that matches you to a driver, that calculates how far away they are. There's so much stuff that happens. It's not just the magic of clicking a button. And so when I first started coding, which sounds like insane right now, I don't know if people are gonna roast me, then maybe they will, but I didn't know any of that, right? Like I had no idea, I had no prior knowledge and I didn't understand how any of this stuff works. So I wish I would have seen sort of both sides. Like I wish I would have understood like, oh, coding or programming is a way to give a series of instructions to a computer. And then that lives somewhere like on a computer somewhere and you connect to that computer to request resources from it or actions from it. And then it does it for you and that's amazing. And I just didn't have that full picture in my head when I was you know, coding tic-tac-toe or doing whatever I was in Python. So I wish we sort of went further than just writing instructions in Python on my own computer. I wish they sort of connected that to how that actually works in the real world more, how there's a front end and a back end and things of that nature. So I think that that's really my first tip is to, to try and learn full stack more, or at least understand it. Don't just try and like learn Java for the sake of learning Java, but understand how that actually works in the real world or why it's applicable for like, when you write a function in Java, how does that get onto a server or how do people actually use that in the real world? I think the second thing really piggybacks off the first thing, right? So the first thing is that you should learn full stack development or at least how it works and understand it conceptually. And I think the second thing would just be to actually build my own side projects. And that again, sounds insane going back and thinking about the fact that I never did that. But whenever I learned something in class, I don't know if this is just how I was in school or what, but like I would learn something in class, I'd do the work, I'd read the textbook chapter, I'd turn in the homeworks, I'd take the tests. And then that was, that was sort of it. And like, that's okay if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. You don't have to go off building side projects every night. And I think not enough people realize that, like you don't have to like eat Nope, not eat, live, breathe, and sleep code. Like that's not something you have to do. But I do wish that I sort of took what I learned in school and tried to apply it to my own projects. Because again, I think if I wasn't learning how, you know, a Python server would run locally on my computer in class, I think that that's something that I could easily learn on my own, right? And that was not something that I learned at all in those classes. And frankly, I think it's really important to do that. So I think if you can figure out a project for yourself to build, even if it's super simple. I think it's really, really helpful, not only to understand like the larger concepts and how things fit into the real world, like I talked about just prior, but I think it's also really helping, helpful in just like reinforcing what you're actually learning in class or in a book or in a course or in a podcast or whatever you might be 
you know, gathering this, this information from. So I would definitely recommend that you guys try and take whatever you're learning and apply it to a specific project that you want to build. And I think it's even better if you can figure out a project that you're really you know, involved in or you're really interested in or passionate about. Because I think a lot of times it's so easy to like come home after a day of classes or a day of work, wherever you, you, know, you are in your life learning the code and convince yourself to like stay up and learn something that's hard or difficult or you know, might not be as interesting as like watching Netflix or whatever you might do as a, as a substitute. So I definitely recommend trying to find a project that you can work on to reinforce the things that you're currently learning or trying to learn and do it, do it with something that you're passionate about because we all know that if you're not passionate about it, you don't really care about it, you're probably just not gonna do it. So try and apply the things that you're learning to a project that you can work on on your own. I think the third and final thing really goes along with sort of like how my channel started, but I really believe that if I can go back and learn how to code all over again from the beginning, one thing that I would really start to focus on is data structures and algorithms. And I know a lot of people are gonna throw their hands up in the air and they're gonna talk about how data structures aren't important or algorithms aren't, don't even matter, or which I don't agree with, but I do think that something I would try and do is like understand how to use those things, one, or really I guess first is 1A is like understand those things and then 1B is like understand how you can actually apply those things, those concepts and problems and topics to actually solve whatever you're dealing with at hand. And so I think that's really important because whether you like it or not, there's a lot that's sort of determined right now in the field for, for particularly like if you're trying to get a job with those things, right? Like if you want to get a job in software engineering, more companies than not, I'm guessing, are gonna ask you a data structures and algorithms question, whether it's on the phone, a coding test, or just as an on-site interview. And similarly, I think you're also gonna have to deal with things like system design concepts. And so I think a lot of people will get upset and will complain, like it's not really what you do day to day. And I do think that they're important. This is like a whole different topic we can talk about in another video. But I do think whether you like it or not, that's sort of the game that you have to play in this day and age. That is how interviews are conducted currently, at least by and large, that's how they are. There are other companies I think who hire by other methods and things, more project-based testing. But again, if you wanna work as a software engineer in the field right now, I do think that those are some, some of the tools you need to have in your toolbox and you need to be able to solve coding interview questions. That's sort of just how it is. That's how it goes. And if you don't like it, sorry, but I think that's honestly like where we're at right now. So I definitely wish that I knew that back then and like, again, it sounds crazy. It sounds like I just like never went online and looked up how these things work, but I really didn't. And I didn't know where to start. So like, I definitely wish I would have looked at leak code earlier because I really believe that if you just do a little bit every day or a little bit over a long period of time, you're gonna be in pretty good shape. Like, I don't think you need that much time to learn these things. It's just a matter of setting down, setting your, your mind to it really, and then just deciding you're gonna learn these things. And I think if I had done that, I probably could have lined up internships pretty easily. I think I could have set myself up really, really well for coming out of college. You know, even though I'm, I think in a pretty good place after four years of college, I do think I sort of could have like cut that down to two or one or whatever the timeline would be. But whatever, however you want to say it, I do think that that just solving those questions earlier and being exposed to them and learning about data structures and algorithms would have been really, really helpful. And I think one really great way to do this, especially if you're in like a college program or not, or if you're just taking classes online and teaching yourself, just start a data structures and algorithms class. Like if you're proficient in a single language, I think that that's really enough to get started. And just starting there, I think doing it now and doing it early is gonna be really, really beneficial for your career as a whole. Like, you know, if these interviews don't change for 10 years, like that's something that you're gonna have in your back pocket. And either way, day to day, it's important to know runtime analysis and how to organize information in memory anyway. So whether or not you wanna do it for the interviews, I still think it's super helpful on the job anyways. So guys, I think those are really the three things that I would focus on if I had to actually go back and learn how to code all the way over again from the start. So again, those three things are basically to learn a full stack language or at least to learn how a full stack works conceptually as a whole, right? Because I don't wanna sort of just be pigeonholed into focusing on one thing with like my blinders on. I wanna know how things work when you sort of zoom out and understand how software works in the real world. I would also try and make sure that I'm working on personal projects, right, on my own. I would try and take the things that I'm learning in class, online, in podcasts, wherever, reading, in books, and apply them to things that I'm passionate about on the side. And I think the third thing is just something that would be really helpful for your career if you start early, which is learning data structures and algorithms and probably practicing leak code problems because that's how interviews go right now. So guys, that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor and leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Like my genie in a bottle. This can get me rich, look like a magazine model. Before you know it, he have her on the stroll. Fresh and ripe, complexion like Acapulco gold. If I had to guess just right, not a J-O. Like a cradle robber, cop the off shop, a trailer load. Know the right number, you can get up.